Marlene Orendorf has chaired this event for the past two years, and as you can see, she's absolutely amazing. We call her the chair with flair. And so without further ado, here is Marlene Orendorf. Our first drawing will be for a, a piece of art that was donated by Cecilia Brendel, who is at the first booth here as you come in. Cecilia is an artist here in Centerville who does some beautiful work, as you've seen. I have a studio in Centerville. It's called Old Masters Galleria, and it's about a block south of uh, Bill's Donuts, a famous landmarks. Uh, I use oil on canvas mostly. Uh, when I do portraits, I, I love to use uh, board because it gives a smooth appearance to the skin. So I like to pay close attention to, you know, just to, to make it look soft and smooth on a portrait. This landscape right here, um, I really love this. I thought it was going to be an easy landscape to do, but ended up being one of the hardest ones because of the different layers, how far back it is, and the light, having the light shining through, you know, the trees. This is my third year. Uh, really, an enjoyable show. It's very, it's a very intimate show. Um, much different than most of the shows that we typically go to, um, but it's very, very nice, very low key. It's nice to have the entertainment, the, the hors d'oeuvres, um, and it, the other artists that are here. I always know when I come here that this is going to be good art, and that folks can come and, and find some really nice items. So glad to be a part of it. Pieces can take anywhere from about a half an hour up to one to two hours, depending on the, the difficulty of the piece. Um, but on average, probably between a half hour and 45 minutes for most average pieces. We use, uh, of course, liquid glass. It comes to us in uh, cullet, little chunks of clear glass that we melt in the furnace at 2,000 degrees. And uh, so that's the working temperature. We have a glory hole that we reheat and melt color into the clear glass. The color comes in what we call frit or it comes in solid bar color. So we melt that, put it on the clear glass and then we start blowing it out, adding more layers of clear to make it larger and uh, that's how we do the, the color process. I've been doing this since about 2007. Really enjoyed it, been, uh, been pretty much addicted to it ever since I started. all sorts of different types of work. I have like kinetic sculpture that I do. Uh, the inspiration behind that work uh, has a lot to do with uh, repurposing materials and that sort of thing. Where like these wires are actually used in welding. Uh, they're actually meant to be vaporized. Uh, so like you never get to see them. Uh, and I like to show uh, things that you can't see for what they are. So like there's like the wind, you can't see it. Uh, but by having these pieces move, you can make uh, aware that the wind is around. Um, and all these pieces individually, maybe they never were meant to amount to much, uh, but together they can make something beautiful, which has a lot to do with my, uh, the meaning behind my work, uh, which I'd like to say that um, we all are, have a purpose. You know, if we work together, you know, we can really make something beautiful that way. Like, I really like this piece in particular. Uh, it's a larger scale piece uh, that I've been starting to make. I really like making the uh, that's really tiny uh, earrings as well. Um, so. It's kind of a cross between the two. It's like, I'm still making the kinetic work, but it's just smaller. So now that you actually become the other uh, sculpture as well. So it's pretty neat. <laughs> uh, well, I think Art of the Trace is really good. It's kind of a, uh, a home uh, environment kind of feel. Like 
you know, a lot of times you go to a gallery and it's kind of like real, you know, on the walls and sterile and uh, you don't really get a chance to actually talk to the actual artist. Or this is more kind of a family friendly way to like uh, talk to the artist, you know, get to know them, get to see the work, get to actually touch the work. Uh, if the artist lets you, I let you do that, you know, with my work. Um, and it's local. Everything you see is local. So you get to meet local artists, you get to meet to them, you get to talk to them. Um, and then you find out it's actually community made work um, that's local. So. This particular thing for about five years, but I've been doing uh, murals and other things for about 17 years. I'm from the 80s, I grew up in the 80s, so all of my stuff is all that pop, pop culture type stuff. So I guess I keep going back to that. I love color. And so anything that involves color, and I just get in this weird mode where Oh, I love the orange today. I love the blue today. I love aqua and pink today or whatever. And that's what I do. I do a lot of faux finishing, which is one of those that um, entails like smushing paint on people's walls. And so I thought, well, why can't I do that with paintings and then people will buy little chunks of them. And so that's what I do. So a lot of the stuff that you see here is stuff that I work with every day. So there's everything from um, glazes to um, plaster to all kinds of weird things. And I thought, well, if we can just like make a little thing and someone will buy it. <laughs> that Kathy Pearson has donated. Kathy, again, is a local Washington Township artist, so we thank her for this beautiful painting that she's donated for us. Well, I did Charles Taylor uh, for the, uh, a friend of mine wrote a book about him, and uh, Charles Taylor was a Wright Brothers um, mechanic. So uh, his, I, my friend's idea was to make him, give him credit for what he had done, enabling them to fly. So I've, I did this sculpture, uh, the portrait of him, and it is now in 27 different places in the world. And uh, it's in the Smithsonian, and it's in France, and. Uh, the Air Force uh, Academy and all kinds of places. So these things kind of develop and uh, I did, uh, I've done sports figures and I did uh, work for uh, different sculptures for the LPGA and uh, the Bengals. Uh, did a couple portraits of Anthony Munoz and I've done a lot of things around town uh, including the sculpture in front of uh, Children's Medical and uh, a couple pieces inside, and there are things out at Wright State, Ohio State, all over. <laughs> when I did the uh, five different uh, medallions, well, they're five feet tall bronzes for the uh, military, uh, it depicts all as many wars as I could get in there to thank the uh, veterans for all their efforts and their lives and everything and it, it's at my age it's everyday experience I just uh, want to I like people and compassion for people I hope we can keep this show going because uh, it really it's a wonderful vehicle to meet your neighbors and it's a fun thing the food is always good and uh, it's a very pleasant evening
we've done, I think this is the fourth or fifth year we've done it, and the Arts Commission uh, puts it on at Yankee Trace every February, close to Valentine's Day. And it's really an opportunity at Art at the Trace to reach out to a lot of local artists, have them bring uh, you know their artwork here, and we really want to reach out and get a wide variety of different ki- types of artwork from the local community so the citizens can come in, can appreciate the diversity of talent, and really support the local artists. So it's, it's a great event, and uh, like I say, it gets bigger and better every year. I just think it's so important for the city government to support the local artist community and to do what we can to provide a showcase so that artists can come and display their wares. That's really our job. I mean, it's up to the artists. I mean, they've got the talent, but we want to make sure they've got an opportunity to display it so that people understand locally what's available. Because you can go to art galleries, you can do that, but this is a place where uh, coming to a central location, you get a wide variety of different types of art to choose from. So we want to continue that. It's a great way to support the uh, local artist community, which is a very important part of what makes the city special. So we want to do what we can to help. I mean, I, I have never been able to come here uh, any year without buying something. And usually it's a tough choice because my wife, Joni, and I, we have different tastes, so we have to negotiate like any husband and wife on these things. But we never walk out empty-handed. And really, there's, there's such an amazing variety of different kinds of things that I think anyone who comes here is going to find something that would fit into their house beautifully. So it's, it's, it's an event I hope people come to every, every year. Again, it's been growing and growing and growing. I think we're going to be doing this for many, many years to come. drawing from for the raffle tickets that were out front and these were done in Mike Elsa's studio. These were done by your city commissioners in the city of Centerville and they were kind of a group project. Well it was really just an evening in my studio. Uh, it's not really a class or workshop, it's just painting with me and we, we paint first and think about it later. There's no mistakes and they paint on a variety of pieces so each of the council members painted on four or five pieces simultaneously. And uh, they didn't know which direction they were gonna hang. And some of them painted on each other's pieces. So it was just energy and appreciation of the moment. I uh, paint on recycled steel. 
Uh, it comes from scrap yards from all over the United States, and I paint using a lot of texture, uh, steel shavings, silicate sand, pumice stone, tar, all kind of gels, and a variety of colors in a, a random fashion brush before the brain. Uh, I paint first and think about it later, and I enjoy color and texture. I've been here uh, six or seven years, so I, actually uh, every year. I, I've never missed. I enjoy it, and I love Centerville and, uh, and the energy. I mean, just look around. It's fun.